us on LTN special feature that comes every Friday at 7.30 p.m. My name is Sharon Ngao. Just like I promised you last week, today we're still featuring CAPS, that's the Kenya Bureau of Standards, and we'll just get to know what, to understand much more what they do in their labs. And to help me with this, I have Jerome, who will be taking us through this lab. Many thanks, Jerome. Ah, thank you. Maybe if you introduce yourself, can you tell our viewers your yeah, name yeah. and what you do at CAPS? Okay, I'm Jerome Zuba. I'm the manager in charge of a chemist uh, organic lab. Mm -hmm. We are in charge of uh, testing of cosmetics, mm -hmm. detergents, alcohol beverages, mm -hmm. and uh, petroleum products. Mm -hmm. yes. Many thanks for granting us this interview. Maybe just when you just want to start, you can just take us through what the name of this lab is and what's being done here, because I can see a number of things like chemicals and the word legs. Okay, uh, organic chemist lab is divided into three labs. Eh? Mm -hmm. We have organic wet chemist lab, we have petroleum lab, and we have a chromatography lab. Mm -hmm. Like now, in this lab, this is a petroleum lab, mm -hmm. where we analyze petroleum-based products, eh? yes. like uh, petrol, kerosene, diesel, grease, and all the lubricants like aging oils, mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that, uh, to check whether they are, they are complying with Kenyan standards and other international standards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the samples are from the manufacturers in Kenya or from uh, Most of these samples, uh, as you can see, mm -hmm. most of them they are from uh, inspection departments, okay. whereby all the products, so when they are coming to Kenya, they must be inspected there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they sample the samples and they submit to the lab for us to analyze. Mm -hmm. The other samples you normally get from uh, quality assurance departments. After they do their inspection, they have to do sampling as part of their procedure. Mm -hmm. Then they subject these samples to for testing in the lab, yeah, mm -hmm. to check whether they are comply with the standard or not. Mm -hmm. Also, we normally get the samples from market surveillance, whereby they normally go to the to the markets and they pick these samples randomly. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Then they subject for testing to check also whether they are complying with the Kenyan standards. Mm -hmm. So we receive all the samples from even from the private uh, from the private samples, yeah, mm -hmm. whereby like yourself. You want to check whether this product is complying with the Kenyan standards. You can still submit that sample eh, mm -hmm. for the analysis there. Eh. Nice. So because you're in the lab, maybe you can just take us through what you do. For instance, when you get like some product, let me just say like uh, petrol. What do you guys do with it? Uh, what normally happens, mm -hmm. uh, we have a procedure like uh, I've told you eh, mm -hmm. uh, for submitting these samples. Eh. Okay. Of course, the samples, they normally come like with a, a very unique uh, base number. Yeah. Like uh, you can't tell. These are sub containers for the petrol, yeah? Okay. Whereby all the petroleum products they normally put in the some containers which are similar, yeah? Then uh, they are given a specific uh, number, which is a very unique number. Mm -hmm. It's called the BS number. Mm -hmm. And uh, the submitting customer will be able to uh, identify the standard we are supposed to use mm -hmm. and the parameters we are supposed to analyze. Mm -hmm. Then after that, uh, we, we now come and allocate the samples. After allocation of samples, then uh, we subject to analysis as per the requirements, mm -hmm. all the parameters that they want us to analyze. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, uh, when it comes to uh, this uh, diesel, yeah? mm -hmm. and uh, you can come with me here, I can show you uh, one of the equipment uh, we normally use for analysis of uh, diesel and uh, uh, kerosene to make sure this, this product is not unterrated with the other product which is supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. So these are distillation units, whereby we normally determine the distillation profile for these products to determine the initial all the way to final boiling point mm -hmm. to check whether this uh, product is contaminated or not. So this uh, one is a uh, semi-automatic distiller for okay. distillation here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. So when you get that the fuel or whatever the product is adulterated, what action do you normally take? Uh, as per our date, mm -hmm. our work is just to analyze then we give the results to the other departments in CABS okay. to take the action, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. You mentioned about makeups and the soul likes because I'm a lady and mm -hmm. I might be interested in knowing fake products when it comes to cosmetics. Yes. How about with cosmetics? What do you do with them? Uh, we have a very big club for cosmetics down there mm -hmm. and uh, very expensive equipment which uh, we normally use to analyze uh, cosmetics. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you are, you can never have a time. We can go down mm -hmm. to that lab mm -hmm. where you normally know, analyze these cosmetics. Yeah. I think we should yeah. proceed down there. Yes, yeah. Maybe we proceeding down just to check how about the cosmetics. What do they do about it? Because with cosmetics, there are a variety of cosmetics from powders 
to foundations. Mm. I really want to see what is being done. We're taking a short break. After this, we'll be right back. Keep it Lolo TV. Okay. viewers welcome back as promised we promised to come to the cosmetic lab just because i'm a lady and i think even cosmetic applies to men so i think this is a very interesting topic that you would also want to know how the cosmetology works when it comes to standardization so jerome welcome back okay yeah thank you yeah mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, the lab where we normally test the cosmetics yeah? we have uh, various types of cosmetics like the foundations, mm -hmm. lotions, mm -hmm. and also even the petroleum jelly, where we normally classify the areas as Also, even yeah. the petroleum jellies and lotions, they are, they are classified under yes. cosmetics. Uh, under cosmetics, nice. yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, one of the most critical parameters uh, which is not supposed to be, to be included when we are making cosmetics, mm -hmm. uh, all manufacturing cosmetics is uh, antroquinone. Eh? Okay. Uh, as you know, most of these ladies, they are using... Uh, Androquinone, all these are skin bleaching products mm -hmm. to bleach their skin. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this lab, we are able to detect whether the product has androquinone or not. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, mm -hmm. this one of the equipment is called the UHPLC. Eh? Mm -hmm. This equipment is used to determine whether uh, the cosmetics, all the lotions, they contain androquinone. Mm -hmm. So, that's one of the most critical parameters you know, when determining this lab. Eh? Mm -hmm. Also, we are able to determine, uh, like, uh, the other product, like the total fatty matter, mm -hmm. uh, total fatty matter, and also thermal stability, whether that product is going to be stable when you apply. As you know, your boot temperature is around 37 degrees Celsius. Mm -hmm. uh, what will happen if this product is made of, will, will be unstable mm -hmm. at around 30 degrees Celsius, which means when you apply in your body, which is 37 degrees Celsius, it's going to melt. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the parameters of interest that we normally check. Mm -hmm. Also, we normally check the total fatty matter. Total fatty matter is the fats mm -hmm. which are contained in, uh, in cosmetics. And that, that one is one of the uh, main uh, ingredients. Mm -hmm. So we normally determine in cosmetics. You mentioned uh, something about the bleaching agent. And I'd just be interested, what does that chemical do to the body? A bleaching agent, it's, um, that chemical normally brings the, it's, it's react with your melanin in your skin eh, mm -hmm. to bleach mm -hmm. the black part. It's like uh, you are trying to peel mm -hmm. your upper part of the skin. Eh? Mm -hmm. So that, that chemical is very harmful to your skin. Eh? Mm -hmm. So if we are devising, that product is not supposed to be the cosmetics product. Eh? Mm -hmm. yes. Because you mentioned here is one of the labs that has the most expensive product, that, like you said. Equipment. Yeah? Like equipment. Yes. So when it comes to lotions, what yeah. do you check in lotions? Lotions, as I've told you, we check for hydroquinone. Hydroquinone. Yeah, Those for bleaching agents. Yeah, for bleaching agents. Mm -hmm. Also, we normally time in the total fatty matter, the amount of fats. Fats? Yeah, fats. What are the fats also? Like, just applying on the body also, the number of fats need to be investigated? No, no, no. That one is not supposed to be investigated. That's main ingredient. Okay. Because if cosmetics, they cause some fats. Mm -hmm. When you apply in your skin, which means it's going to shine, eh? Yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that's the beauty for these cosmetics, yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, we normally analyze uh, pH okay. to make sure that is not reacting with your body, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we normally study the pH. Mm -hmm. And the other parameter I've told you is the thermal stability. Mm -hmm. And we are able to determine the metals, the heavy metals, which are not supposed to be contained. But that one is done in the other lab, because they are in organic lab. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe you can take us through maybe any other equipment that you use in your normal routine when you come to, when it comes to standardization in the lotions. Okay. Or any the, other product. In the lotions. No, All even other with product. the any other product. Ah, okay, yeah. Uh, like I've told you, this uh, equipment is called uh, UHPLC. Mm -hmm. This is a computerized equipment. It's one of the higher equipment, okay. which is used to analyze, uh, to determine the antroquinone in mm -hmm. cosmetics. Also, we have another HPLC equipment here. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can uh, just take us through. Yes. This is a uh, Shimano HPLC. Mm -hmm. This equipment we now use to determine the caffeine. Caffeine in uh, alcohol, beverage, uh, no, in uh, soft drinks, 
and also we determine vitamin C, that is called because in the preservative. Eh? Mm -hmm. We normally use this equipment to, uh, to determine whether they are codent in those uh, soft drinks. Eh? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and we, these are the chemicals that are used? Yeah, these are waste. Okay. Where after, oh. after we run the equipment, mm -hmm. there's somewhere we normally store the chemicals inside these bottles. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't dispose our waste direct to the environment. Mm -hmm. We have to keep them in, in a certain bottles, then uh, we label them, yeah? Mm -hmm. Then for safe disposal, yeah? Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. And also, we have another equipment mm -hmm. here. It's called uh, LCMS, eh? mm -hmm. What does this do? Uh, this LCMS, LCMS uh, is, we now use this equipment uh, to determine eh? mm -hmm. uh, antibiotics, may, maybe in milk. You know that uh, when the cow consumes a lot of uh, medicine eh? mm -hmm. and you go and milk that milk, mm -hmm. maybe it can contain some uh, antibiotics. Mm -hmm. So those antibiotics, we now use this equipment to determine whether it's there in the milk or not. Ah, uh, yes. Nice. So as you're concluding, what's yeah. your parting shot, maybe to the LTN viewers who are watching you and are wondering what's going on today yeah. on our TV? Yeah. Our parting shot, I think I can tell them, uh, maybe our motto, mm -hmm. standards for quality life. Mm -hmm. uh, if you follow the standards, then uh, your life will be good. Because mm -hmm. uh, you are sure all those products which uh, we are consuming, mm -hmm. and they have some mark of standards mm -hmm. which are certified, those are good products. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thanks a lot, Jerome, yeah, for yeah. taking us through. At least I've known one or two things that is happening, and in, indeed it was a privilege for us, even for you yourself, taking us through all these things. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> all right. Welcome back. As we're proceeding with the interview, we're already in another lab. That is the microbiology lab. And we have a very able person just to take us through. I'd like him to introduce himself. Karibu sana. Thank you very much. My name is Agembo Clarkson. Mm -hmm. I'm the officer in charge of microbiology mm -hmm. laboratory, Nairobi. Mm -hmm. Yes, I've been uh, in charge of this lab for quite some time. Mm -hmm. Yes. This is where we carry out microbiological analysis of mostly food products. Mm -hmm. But we also deal with other products like animal feeds, like drinking water, processed water, mm -hmm. textile products like sanitary towels. Mm -hmm. We also do analyze uh, cosmetics and also chemicals like disinfectants. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the busiest labs as you will be able to see mm -hmm. and uh, we are involved in almost all the food products that are in the market mm -hmm. Karibu. and we're interested and in to our LTN viewers welcome aboard so you can just show us what this lab entails so first of all uh, when the samples come they are brought this is the first stage mm -hmm. where they are received and before the samples are uh, submitted into the lab, we have to check a number of um, issues. First of all, we have to ensure that the samples are of, have maintained integrity, mm -hmm. meaning the packaging material is not, um, is not spoiled. Mm -hmm. Yes, so that uh, whenever we start the analysis, we are sure that the integrity of the sample has been maintained from the point it was sampled to the laboratory. Mm -hmm, nice. So those are the things we check. And we also we check the parameters that have been listed, whether they are in our scope of test, and so on. Mm -hmm. Yes, before we receive them inside the lab. Okay. Yes. So you're taking us through the lab now? Yes. Okay. You are welcome now. And as you can see, we have prevented the external environment from the internal environment. Mm -hmm. So that whatever uh, happens inside here remains inside mm -hmm. yeah so that we don't contaminate the external environment nice. yes so you can say it's safe it is safe <laughs> uh -huh. yes it is safe mm -hmm. 
Yeah, um, before analysis starts, uh, we have to prepare media. And media is the food for microorganisms. You know, microorganisms are la just like plants. They grow. Mm -hmm. They are living organisms. So what we simply do is prepare specific media, which is the food for specific organisms. Mm -hmm. For example, these are now the media. They are commercially prepared. Mm -hmm. Yes. So every organism has a specific medium of growth. Mm -hmm. Yes. For example, this is standard plate count, which is for growing general microorganisms in general, be it bacteria, be it molds, be it yeast. We have a specific media for that. Mm -hmm. We have one for yeast and mold specific, listeria. So every specific organism has a specific medium of growth. Mm -hmm. So this is the starting point, preparation of the medium. Mm -hmm. We weigh a specific quantity of the media into distilled water and then sterilize the material for use in the subsequent analysis. Mm -hmm. Yes. Such a, a very hard work and I, I, I guess everything needs to be in consideration and very yeah. keen into details. Before we start analysis, we must make sure that all the materials that we are using are sterile. Mm -hmm. So even the media that we prepare, when we are preparing it, it is not sterile. Mm -hmm. So we have to sterilize everything using the equipment that you are seeing on the other side. They are called autoclaves. Mm -hmm. Yes. Autoclaves sterilize the media at a specific temperature, pressure, and time. The temperature is 121 degrees centigrade mm -hmm. for a time period of 15 minutes at a pressure of 1.1 bar. At, with those conditions, no organisms will exist. Mm -hmm. So that when we are using that media, we know that we are starting with a material that is sterile. Mm -hmm. So that eventually what grows, we are sure it came from the sample that you are testing. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that it's a hundred percent Sterile. Sterile. Yes. Okay, so yeah. what else? I can see like the products like... Uh, yeah, these are some of the products that uh, have been received today. Mm -hmm. And um, this laboratory tests samples immediately they are received. Mm -hmm. Because we are dealing with microorganisms. Mm -hmm. You know, if you delay, they grow. Yeah. But we want to test the sample as soon as it arrives so that we know the point of microorganisms it contains by the time it arrives in the lab. Mm -hmm. We cannot wait for hours or the next day, no. Mm -hmm. They are analyzed the same day mm -hmm. or within the shortest time period, within one hour. So when you're analyzing and you find that the microorganisms exceed or yes. what, what action do you take? Because for analyzation, mm -hmm. it's for the caves to give the standardization marks, yes. if I'm not wrong. Yeah. So what happens? First of all, uh, we have test methods which are validated and they give guidelines on what we are supposed to follow for every organism. Mm -hmm. Yes, and we are also guided by the Kenya standard. You know, every product has a Kenya standard which gives the requirements mm -hmm. and also the limit of microorganisms. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if this is cassava, it has specific microbial parameters that must be tested, mm -hmm. which are in the standard. We are also guided by Kenya standard okay. that it states these are the parameters that you are supposed to test, and these are the limits. If it is yeast and molds, it should be this maximum. Mm -hmm. If it, it is, exceed. it should not exceed. Mm -hmm. If it is total plate count, it should be this maximum. Mm -hmm. Should not exceed. If there are some pathogens that we also do, and those pathogens are not supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. So, in a situation where we find the counts of um, bacteria or um, fungal exceeds the maximum quoted limit by the standards, then obviously uh, we advise accordingly. Mm -hmm. yes. So from the lab, suggest issue a report and then the respective departments deal with it. They deal with it. And uh, one of uh, our, main, uh, our main clients are quality assurance okay. of cabs, of course, mm -hmm. and market surveillance of cabs. Those are our main plans, mm -hmm. followed by private customers and also import. Mm -hmm. Yes. So our work actually is to carry out analysis and to give 
test results. Mm -hmm. um, the other divisions will do the decision making. Mm -hmm. Yes. So as you say, each and every department has their own roles. Yes. What else from this lab that we need to know? Well, you need to know that this is one of the accredited laboratories. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, of course, Wajibika Nakebs is an initiative that ensures that uh, the public are aware of what is out there. Mm -hmm. So testing plays a role in Wajibika Nakebs because before any product is certified or is put into the market, mm -hmm. it must pass through testing. Mm -hmm. And the test results that we produce are used in those decision making. They ensure that people in quality assurance, in market surveillance, make an informed decision based on the test results. So being accredited ensures that the test results that we give out there are always accurate, reliable, at all time. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we are accredited by SANAS, that is South African uh, National Accreditation Systems. Mm -hmm. And uh, accreditation is uh, a confirmation or attestation mm -hmm. that the test results that we produce here are always accurate, always reliable, and accepted globally. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that is what we are proud of. In fact, for microbiology, the number of parameters that are accredited are 40. And soon, we are, during surveillance assessment, we are going to add another 10. Our scope of test is still wide, yes, mm -hmm. but what is accredited is also very wide. Mm -hmm. Yes. So maybe uh, just a clear understanding as you're finishing. So in this microbiology yes. department, yes. It, it means that you test a variety of things from makeups to food items yes. to just everything. I've said textiles, mm -hmm. uh, disinfectants, we test uh, masks, we test... Even masks? Even masks. You, what do you, you test in masks? <laughs> <laughs> just we test the efficiency okay filtration efficiency maybe you can uh -huh. maybe you can come over and yes see. yeah <laughs> when you what do you mean by filtration how are you it's my profile microbial filtration efficiency yes uh -huh. that is the mask is able to control any microbes or any contamination whichever the virus is getting into your system mm -hmm. yes as it is protected so we are checking if it allows to go through or it is controlling. So we create a suction pressure here. And now this is now the gas that is causing the utilization of the microorganisms that we've concentrated here to check if it passes through. And I'll analyze the membrane that are fixed here, which I'll check mm -hmm. if it is passing or it is controlling. Mm -hmm. We are checking the efficiency, efficacy of the mask. Actually, the, it mimics the, the, you know, those are, uh, it is a compressed air. Okay. Yeah, that compressed air passes through that fluid that you see down there. Mm -hmm. And that fluid is impregnated with bacteria at a very high pressure so that it, um, with that high pressure, it injects aerosols through the membrane, which, I mean, through the, the filter, I mean, the mask that you're seeing there, mm -hmm. at a very high speed. Mm -hmm. And then on this other side, this is a vacuum pump, it sucks any aerosol that might pass through that mask. Mm -hmm. And any aerosol that passes through that mask contain bacteria. Mm -hmm. So we collect that and culture, mm -hmm. and eventually calculate what was there before and what has been obtained after. Mm -hmm. And we check what is the percentage filtration. Mm -hmm. Actually, the normal mask is supposed to have efficiency of 98%. It should filter 98%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we know what is in the fluid, mm -hmm. and eventually we collect what passes through, and we culture and count. When you say 98%, those are the clinical masks, because nowadays we have surgical, every yes. type of masks. No, we only them. deal with surgical, with surgical, surgical masks. masks. Mm -hmm. We do not test any other. And for type. surgical, mostly it applies to mostly generally in yes. hospitals, because yes. the general public, most of us don't even wear the surgical masks, <laughs> apparently. So, <laughs> too bad for them. Too bad for yeah. them. Mm -hmm. 
So are yes. you concluding your parting shot to our viewers? Um, I can assure the public we have uh, competent staff mm -hmm. that are um, equal to the task that we do here. They are qualified, we train them internally, and we keep monitoring their competence so that any test results that we produce, which is going to be used in decision making, is as accurate as possible. And when the public see a diamond mark a uh, standardization mark, a fortification mark, or import standardization mark, they should have confidence mm -hmm. that it has passed through rigorous testing process mm -hmm. to confirm what is in the labels. Mm -hmm. Yes. Just before I let you go, mm -hmm. like for these products, these yes. are new products in the market that want certifications? Not really. Mm -hmm. We deal also with the new products, but there is a surveillance. Mm -hmm. We have a surveillance division which carry out market surveillance. Okay. So some of these could be from market surveillance. Okay. Others could be renewal of the standardization mark permit mm -hmm. or diamond mark permit. Mm -hmm. Some could be imports. Yes, and others could be from private Entity. companies that may just want to know their quality of product. Mm -hmm. As our work is to test as they come and give accurate results. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thanks a lot, Ogembo, for granting us this interview. Yes. Indeed, the pleasure was all ours. I can walk you as you see the last. Please do. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes, the incubation room. Mm. It is important. It's one of our best, I mean, uh, most. Like these are fridges? These are incubators. Incubators, yeah, okay. Yeah, they are incubators. You know, microorganisms, uh, apart from the food that I showed you, okay. we incubate them. And every type of microorganism grow at specific temperature. There are those which grow best at 42, others at 37, mm -hmm. others at 25, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So depending on the test method that we are following, this plates are incubated at the correct temperature so that we get the maximum growth possible mm -hmm. yes and we have enough equipment i will uh, not forget to say that mm -hmm. we are well equipped to be able to carry out all the analysis of all the samples that we receive mm -hmm. and also to reduce we are trying to reduce testing turnaround time by also employing new techniques mm -hmm. that are coming up Mm -hmm. Yes. So this are this is your headquarters in Nairobi. So yeah. are your other branches in different counties. Yes. Do they still have the same equipment, or all the standardization is being done from Nairobi? No. We have uh, other laboratories in Kisumu, mm -hmm. which is also well equipped. Okay. My both microbiology and chemical analysis. Mm -hmm. Eldoret, new building. Mombasa is also of almost of the same capacity. Mm -hmm. So we are doing all this, and especially microbiology labs are in every regions I've mentioned, Kisumu, Eldoret, Mombasa, so that they, it takes the shortest time possible to mm -hmm. submit samples to the laboratory once they are from the market. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you so much, Ogembo. Mm. Mm -hmm. You are welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, if you had time next time, we'll explain a lot. Next time we'll explain a lot, because today it was just like walking, walking, yeah. but next time start to explain, yes. Zote Kwakina, because I can see you have much things that a needs... Lot. Eh? A lot. To our LTN viewers, welcome back, and we're in another laboratory. They have different names for these laboratories. Now, this is a polymer lab laboratory. We'll get to know what polymer stands for. I personally, I don't know. And I have Tabitha here, who will just be taking us through this laboratory. And if, when you see things, they're just samples that are in here. So maybe Tabitha will just take us through. Tabitha, karibu sana. Okay, thank you so much, Sharon. Uh, welcome to Polymer Laboratory. This is a physical chemistry lab. 
we do a lot of physical tests in leather and leather products. In leather products, we do footwear, uh, which would be of interest to you. Uh, we also do rubber products. We do gloves, uh, condoms uh, for mattresses. We also do paper and paper products. Uh, all the books you use, the manila papers. Uh, we do writing aids, anything that you use for writing. Pens, pencils, crayons, uh, all that is tested here. We also do paint and paint products. Uh, the reflective materials, the chevrons, the road furnitures, they are all tested in this particular lab. So anything that you can think of that is not food, mm -hmm. that is not engineering, mm -hmm. Yeah, it is tested in polymer laboratory. So basically everything that you use in a normal basis is tested. Whether pens, I'm interested even mattresses. Yes, we do polyurethrin mattresses are tested here, whether foam mm -hmm. or fiber or there are some who mix composite material. Yeah, they are all tested in polymer laboratory. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because these are the variety of things that needs to be tested. Mm -hmm. Can you just point out one of the specific things and maybe you can just take us through because I can't pinpoint maybe any of your interests that you feel the public should at least know what it entails? Okay, we can look at uh, maybe, for example, uh, our footwear. Mm -hmm. We can look at even the paper. Mm -hmm. What is usually of interest in these physical parameters is, for example, their strength. How mm -hmm. strong are they? Okay. Your shoes, when you wear them, when you walk, the flexing. Uh, how long will you wear them, for example? Mm -hmm. The shoe, the sole, and the upper part, mm -hmm. are they strong when they're stitched together? How long eh, does it tear? What is the tear strength? Uh, what is the elongation? What are the forces that break? Mm -hmm. So these are some of the tests actually which are done in all the products. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, the tension, how strong are they? That's why you find that the major equipment in this lab is this tensile mm -hmm. machine. It is the base equipment because it's the one that is used to test all the the products to determine their strength. Mm -hmm. yeah. So even shoes need standardization marks? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it, they, have a, they have an S mark, they have a standard in which we follow, they must meet. Mm -hmm. Yes, they, they have. And I'm interested to know how about the mattress because apparently my best hobby, hobby could be sleeping. Could be sleeping, okay. <laughs> yeah. For mattresses, we have a KS uh, 346 for mattresses. Uh, we usually test the compression set. If you sleep on it, how far will it compress? We usually complain of backaches. So the compression set is an important parameter because mm -hmm. yeah, we, require, we need to ensure that your back is safe. Mm -hmm. We also do the tensile properties, ukibeba, huh? strength. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We also do the, the dimensions, the length and width, mm -hmm. yeah, even the thickness, because the thickness matters. Those are some of the things that determine the grade. Uh, of the mattress, the grade and class of the mattress. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the marketing, I mean like the companies, just to a clear under, under, understanding of this, if I'm a supplier or I'm a producer of the markets, I'm the one who's supposed to be bringing you the mattresses so that you, you guys can standardize them. Uh, usually what we do is here we just test, mm. but we have different customers. Mm -hmm. You can submit your sample privately. Okay. Yeah, you can submit it through our quality assurance. Our mm -hmm. quality assurance department is the one that is in charge of the standardization process. Okay. So before they give you the standardization mark or they certify your product, mm -hmm. it must be tested. Mm -hmm. So they're also our customers and then there are those that are imported. Mm -hmm. So entry level samples are also, if they don't come with a certificate of conformity, mm -hmm. they also get a local COC, which is issued after testing in the laboratory. Nice. Yeah. I'd be interested to know what you test in pencils. Pencils? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, there's usually a chemical parameter that is led, but it's tested in our inorganic chemistry department. Okay. But here we usually test the, the splitting, we test the writing capacity of that pencil. Yeah, it's just physical test. You look at it. Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. how strong is it? When mm -hmm. a child holds it, does it keep on breaking? Okay. Yeah, the splits, the edges, are they smooth? Are they, uh, are they rough? Of course, the standard requires it to be smooth so that even as you write, mm -hmm. you do not have any. Uh, 
harm does not occur to your your hands mm -hmm. yeah it's not a handful what you guys do here we shouldn't be taken for granted <laughs> <laughs> maybe if somebody just comes here it's when you'll get to understand what they do but mm -hmm. a bit as we concluding maybe you're parting short towards what you guys are doing towards even the wajibika campaign because right now um kebs we, you have the wajibika na kebs campaign about the standardization of mm -hmm. products maybe you're parting short to our l10 views okay uh our customers now are empowered. Uh, we usually like uh, buying our products from very many streams. We we'll just advise you to at least check the uh, standardization status using our 223 number. Mm -hmm. Just send the SM number to 223 to confirm that the product is certified. Mm -hmm. Asante. Asante sana Tabitha and indeed you guys are doing a very good job. Just continue with your jobs and thanks so, thank you so much for granting us this interview. Karibu sana. Mm -hmm. Now, just as Ogimba has already said, he's already taken you through this lab just to get a keen understanding on what Kebs does. He says they are thorough and they do thorough work to ensure that the products out there in the market are up to the good standardization that it's needed in the market. And that marks the end of today's feature story. Remember, we are featuring the Kenya, the Kenya Bureau of Standards. Until next time, my name is Sharon Ongao. Do have yourselves a lovely evening.